Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Run. I'm Egberto is your host. Thank you so kind for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Just got back from KPFT. We had a wonderful show. Good callers calling in. Hey, Bridge, I thought you called in and accidentally got dropped. We have this phone system that nobody exactly knows exactly how it works, all that good stuff. I hope you. Uh, I hope they didn't drop you or something like that. But anyhow, welcome aboard, AVQ. Welcome aboard. Paul Fleming, E2247, welcome aboard. Michael Rodden, welcome aboard. Yvette Avery Heron, how are my peeps doing today? I started the chat late, so I have to read some of this stuff. Uh, Rodden, actually do me a favor. Let's see, uh, because I thought it would be in the chat, but it's not in the chat. Go ahead and re your thing, uh, Rodden, please, if you don't mind, because it seems like I am only seeing some comments and not all comments on Facebook. So re it again so that I can go ahead and put that out. Anyhow, we had a great time today at KPFT. I uh, am taking a hiatus on Monday out there, but not here, of course. But altogether, we had a great time. How is everybody doing today? I trust you are all doing fine. I trust you're all doing fine. Anyhow, according to Michael Rodden, Elon Musk went crazy with a bad... Ban Hammer yesterday removing numerous liberal and leftist accounts without cause or explanation. This would be a violation of his own company's term of service. Elon Musk seemed to have the intention of creating a new right-wing bubble, safe space out of Twitter, as their user base and advertisers bail from the rot. Result is the platform is going to crash and burn. I don't think the platform is going to crash and burn. What I do believe is... We are going to have to find a new platform, and there, there are talks about, I don't remember, there's a new, new one out. No, it's not new, but um, in fact, it's the same platform that Truth Social is, is based on, and people are talking about going onto that platform as well. Welcome aboard, Eric Hayes. Welcome aboard, Lee Grant. Welcome aboard, Tom C. says, winter has arrived in Michigan, cold outside with snow flurries, but warm in the house. Nice and warm. Okay, let's see what else we got here. ARS Technica says Musk bans live location sharing, says he'll sue creator of plane tracking bot. Elon, Elon Musk said he's taken legal action against the creator of a Twitter bot that tracked his private jet and has changed Twitter's rules to ban sharing of live location in most scenarios. Musk has completely reversed his pledge since November 6 when he wrote that his commitment to free speech extends beyond not banning the account of fallen by, you know, uh, his free speech extends even to not banning the account following my plane, even though that is a direct personal safety risk, as reported yesterday. The Musk-led Twitter suspended the Elon Jet account that used publicly available data to track Musk's plane and suspended the personal account of Ellen Jot creator Jack Sweeney. Sweeney, a student at the University of Central Florida, wrote on Facebook that Twitter suspended all 30 of my Twitter accounts he also discusses account suspensions in a Mastodon. That's what I'm talking about. Mastodon is a, that platform system. Actually, everybody can create their own Mastodon that connects to other Mastodons and create a new kind of an interface. But I don't know how user-friendly that the Mastodon is to use, but as more people get on it, like every reporter could have their own Mastodon and following and connect it into an array of Mastodons as I, as I, as I recall reading about it a few months ago. Elon gave me no warning, plus he suspended all of my accounts, including those that don't track traffic people, he wrote. That includes bot striking NASA planes, experimental aircraft, and weather planes, he wrote. Yeah, Elon, these, these guys only like democracy when it doesn't involve them, right? But, hey, who cares, right? Who cares? Look like my green screen is doing a little bit of something that I probably should try to clean up before I go any further. So I am going to try to clean something on my green screen right now. Bear with me a quick little second as I go try to clean that green screen if I can, but I don't know if I can right now. There we go. That's where I need to expand. And I'm going to try to fix the green screen so we don't get all those flurries. You know how, to, you know how it is, guys. You try and you try it. I don't think the green screen from this particular application that I use is very well done. Um, I wish it would get better. We'll see if it get better over time. Okay, I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Okay, continuing with... 
El Señor Rodnin, TechCrunch says, Twitter has banned prominent journalists who cover Elon Musk with no warning. And we read that already. It's the top one. All right, Fox News. And yes, I can believe I'm actually sharing a Fox, a follow-up from Fox News. But even they see what Elon Musk has been doing as wrong. So here goes. Twitter suspends CNN's New York Times Waypo journalists. Elon Musk allegedly they are banned for doxing his family. Uh, critics slammed the self-described free speech absolutist Elon Musk. There was utter uh, commotion on Twitter after it was discovered that prominent media critics of its owner, Elon Musk, were simultaneously banned from the platform without explanation. Among those whose account were permanently suspended in CNN was Donnie Sullivan, New York Times technical writer Ryan Mack, Washington Post reporter Daryl Harwell, The Intercept journalist Michael Lee, Mashable writer Matt Binder, former MSNB host Keith, Keith Oberman. I, I don't know what took him so long to ban Keith Oberman. Keith has been giving him a hard time for a long time. I, love, I, I used to love me some Keith. Although Keith did something that I don't think was cool. He, he was talking about uh, a lady uh, that, that he said she used to be very progressive when I used to date her. Who was that that he was talking about? And I'm like, that isn't a cool thing to say. You don't need to come out and talk about having dated this person that now turned out to be pretty right wing. Uh, who was it that he said he dated? Can't remember who it was. I, 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 I want to say that it, anyway, I'll think about it some other time. All right, let's move on. AVQ says, all intra posts reposted. Thank you so kindly for doing that. And it was all about Elon Musk. Oh, man. All right. Lee Grant says, hey, all Tom is enduring winter where he's at. And of course, we have Eric Hayes who says, yep, remove those that shared his position and addresses. Wait a minute. Those are readily available on the internet right now. There's not, there's not private information. Uh, let's see. It's his platform. You're right about that. And we have the choice of leaving that platform as soon as we get something else. AVQ says, John Smith, the jet location is public information. It's just repeating public information in Twitter that got them banned. So, I mean... Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense what he's doing, right? Doxin has always been against Twitter policy and still is. He's not doxing. He's providing publicly available information. Right. Uh, let's see. Michael Rodney says, Elon's, Elon's paying for it all, right? Losing $100 billion in value among his corporations for his efforts to corrupt the public square. I love it. Let him go bankrupt. All right. John Smith. At AVQ Actual, no, it wasn't. Musk has paid for privacy for his travel plans when they were fly. Look, uh, anyway, no point there. But he says, relationships, Keith Olbermann has been in relationships with Katie Turry. I remember that one. Laura Ingram, 1997, and Rebecca Lobo, 1995. It was another woman that I, I want to say was Carrie Lake, but I don't think it was her. Because he said he doesn't know what's wrong with her. She went super conservative on him and he just couldn't understand how that could happen how that could happen all right uh what else we got here uh Bree says she has 10 inches of snow and still snowing on top of three inches of ice ay 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 be careful my girl don't don't slip on that ice and do remember that you got to take good care of your roof because I understand people have been getting this sort of heavy snow in the Northeast and it has been causing quite a few roof collapses because it's not that powdery dry snow. It is that wet thing and it's like having a pool on top of your house, which wasn't designed to be a pool, right? Our Eric Hayes says, story of the Vanderbilts who the patriarchs predicted what would happen, the pissing away of the fortune of 200 billion in today's money. You sure will get a kick out of this seeing rich go poor. I'm not into seeing the rich go poor, all right? I don't want to see the rich go poor. I want to see the rich pay their fair share. Bridge says her roof is good. She's already checked it. Keep on checking it, beautiful. Michael says, yep, the rain hasn't stopped for two days in Brooklyn. My uncle lives in Brooklyn, and uh, he just got out of the hospital. I think all is okay. Replying, uh, Egberto, please post this on the screen uh, for John Smith. What is it? Okay, let's go ahead and do that for John Smith. All right, John Smith, this is for you. My comment to free speech extends even to not banning the account following my plane. 
even though this is a direct personal safety risk. Yeah. Okay. That was written in, did you put the, I see the email, but I don't see what the date of that email is. I think that was several months ago that he wrote that, right? Anyhow, 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 let's go ahead and talk a little bit about oil companies and how they're trying to, you know, you know, um, BP was, uh, <laughs> they try to make their, their BP mean something, right? Beyond petroleum. We're working on beyond petroleum. And all of them want to have, all these oil companies are funding little startups that's for green energy purportedly. Check this out. And then we'll take it on the other side. The oil companies are at it again. You know, they want you to believe that they are into green energy now. So they're going to invest money into doing things that create renewable energies doing all different types of green, etc. Well, guess what? The dirty little secret is out. No, that's not what they're doing. I want you to listen to Rokana and this interview as far as misinformation. These guys still intend to pull as much out of the, of the earth as they can. They are going to burn the earth up because most of them that are making a killing right now know that they won't be around when all the cleanup is necessary. Folks, this is mean. This is evil. But this is what they do. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. On alleged misinformation, not political misinformation, but what Democrats in Congress say is a deliberate push by big oil and gas companies to mislead people about what they're doing on the climate crisis, basically greenwashing. That's in this new report just out from House Oversight Committee Democrats, which says Shell, Chevron, BP, American Petroleum Institute all made big investments protecting fossil fuels for years to come. With accusations, those companies only paid lip service to investments in renewable energy while raking in record profits. They also say industry leaders refused to comply with the committee's subpoenas. NBC News has reached out to those companies for comment on specifics here. No response yet. But in the past, the head of Chevron, for example, has said any suggestion they're engaged in an effort to spread disinformation information or mislead the public is wrong. No Republican signed on to this report, and the committee's top GOP member has slammed the Democrats' investigation as an attempt to deliver partisan theater for primetime news. I sat down with House Oversight Committee member Congress, Congressman Ro Khanna before that report dropped. Here's part of our conversation. Talk to me about what you think is the most important thing people should know about your findings. Hallie, we can't solve the climate crisis if we don't solve the climate misinformation crisis. And these hearings, two years where we had the big oil CEOs testifying for the first time in front of Congress, exposed that big oil has been misleading the American public. They lied for decades about climate change, that they denied that human activity caused it. And now they're misleading people, calling themselves green companies, saying they're going to hit the Paris Accords. But as you pointed out, they have very little actual investment going into clean technology, very little actual investment going into climate. People often think of the word misinformation and they think about what we've talked about so often over the last several years, which is political misinformation, misinformation and disinformation as it relates to election related matters. This is different. Hell, it is. I mean, think if the oil companies had told the truth to the American people in the 1970s. They had the best scientists in the world. They knew what was going on. They made a decision not to tell us that. And that's why we have the situation we do today, where we're almost at 1.5 degrees of global warming, the level which scientists say is unacceptable, which is why we have such high gas prices, because we didn't diversify our economy. And then you'd think they'd wake up and they'd say, OK, we're going to change course. But instead, they continue to mislead. They are actually increasing their carbon emissions. The internal documents show that they believe that this is a license to continue the status quo. They entrench the fossil fuel industry while claiming something totally different. These companies have pushed back on um, some of the claims that, that are reflected here in this final report, um, including you know Chevron, Exxon, etc. The companies essentially say, hey, we are advocating for responsible climate change investment. We are doing that. Well, I'm sure they're talking about it because they know it's good PR. But as the documents show, they're working to have lobbyists kill climate legislation. They can't have it both ways. They can't call themselves clean companies and then commit to business plans to increase CO2 emission. 
What was the most shocking thing to you? It was the culture in these oil companies. So these companies have a culture of intimidation and bullying, uh, and that's what's got to change. Do you think this report realistically could ch help change that culture? I think it sets the foundation. We're going to be referring the report to other agencies, which we'll announce uh, soon. Uh, but it's going to take more work. It's going to take mobilization. It's going to take people more than a House subcommittee with more resources looking into the millions of documents. We haven't had the resources to look into all the documents or get all the documents. But I think it's this first step in telling the story of what these companies have been doing. It sounds like there is an acknowledgement that this is about as far as the House can go, considering the shift in power next Congress with this. Do you feel like you're handing off the ball now to the Senate and to the White House? And what do you want to see them do with it? Well, I do think that they uh, there are a lot of documents. There's a lot of evidence that they could act on. Uh, we will be doing whatever we can in the next few weeks to help make that possible. Uh, and we're still in conversations. And so I, I don't want to make more news on on the program. But Please suffice do. it to say, <laughs> suffice it to say that uh, this isn't the end and that the House is going to be working with all the okay. evidence for for a body that has more resource, more resources to continue the work. How do you respond to the uh, the criticism that this, uh, the work that has been done to create this ultimate final report is simply, let's say, partisan or has been politicized? It has been candidly uh, Democrats doing it because the Republicans didn't want to participate. I mean, from the day one when the big oil hearings happened, uh, every Republican gave a tribute uh, to the big oil executives. They didn't want to ask the tough questions. And so if you only have one side that uh, acknowledges that climate change is a real issue, it is unfortunately partisan. Uh, but ultimately, I think what, what matters are facts. And this report lays out the facts uh, and the facts are that the big oil companies have continued to mislead the American public. Now tell me if that makes any sense. Tell me if it makes any sense for we, for us as American citizens to allow an, 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 a, corpor a corporatocracy of this sort to exist. They are using our own natural resources to hurt us. Why do we allow this? We have the power to do several things. We have the power to nationalize the oil industry, keep all the engineers and everybody else that makes good money, keep them at those high salaries to do the good work that they're doing right now. But nationalize it, get rid of the executives and the shareholders, pay them out, and then going forward, let it be what it needs to be, what it should be. It's a fundamental natural resource. And as a fundamental natural resource, it shouldn't be in the hands of the plutocracy. It shouldn't be in the hands of those who are simply there to make a buck on what should belong to us all. Exactamente. That is absolutely right. Okay, what are our peeps? Saying, Bree says, Elon abandoned Tesla. The EV market maker's third, uh, let's see, the EV market third uh, largest individual shareholder calls for a new CEO as a Twitter circus test investor patience. Tesla investors are growing frustrated with a fall in stock price and CEO who is spending his time between running three different companies. It's become such that Tesla's third largest individual shareholder, Kuguan, Leo is calling for a new CEO takeover of the EV maker, which would allow Musk to focus on his other ventures like SpaceX and Twitter. I hear you, man. You know, everybody likes to talk about how smart this guy is. He's in all that at all. Please remember that. He is in all that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Eric Hayes, uh, what, what did the rich do to deserve going poor? I want the rich to pay their fair share of taxes and to pay their workers a living wage. If they go poor, they have to have done something to deserve it. P.S. There's very few wealthy people who don't deserve this outcome, but still results of their own making. Absolutely. These guys don't deserve what they have because, again, they don't innovate. They don't create. And we should, we should start acknowledging these realities, right? We should. We should. They, they, they invest in others technology in what others have created and then they say oh we're so good at doing this no you're not come on all right 
Eric Hayes, what did the rich... No, this is another one. Michael Rudnan, Eric Hayes, what did the rich do to preserve? I think that's a repeat. The mainstream media is actually talking about corporate greenwashing, biting the hand that feeds. Let's see how long that lasts, though, Mr. Rudnan. Let's see how long that lasts. Uh-oh, I have somebody's name. Carterman Daniel says, you know what, to the GOP? Uh, well, we're nice here, Mr. Mr. Uh, Daniel. Michael says, disinformation is intentionally misleading the public for personal profit or political power. So what Exxon is doing is disinformation, right? Misinformation is unintentionally misleading the public, usually the result of being lied to themselves. That is not what they are doing. They know the truth. There's a difference that should be distinguished. I think what you're saying is the report should have used disinformation instead of misinformation, Senor Rudnan, and you would be right. Uh, Maywood says, uh, uh, let's see, I want the rich to pay their fair share. Daniel Ledo says, LOL, LOL. I thought ga high gas prices was price gouging. Yes, it is. The way it's done right now, that's exactly what it is. You know when it wouldn't be price gouging? If the increase in price in gas tax was caused by gas taxes and we were investing that gas tax, that would be good. So lo que estoy diciendo? Mira, escucha lo que estoy diciendo, porque si me escucha, vas a poder entender lo que estoy diciendo. If you listen to me, you'll understand what I'm saying, my brother. All right, JB says, welcome aboard, JB. He says, I like Roe. He represents a district right next to mine. I have a great rep too, S2. Yep, 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 you indeed do. Lee Grant says, Roe needs to tell this to the China, huh? to China and India. Okay, I don't know what he needs to tell them, my brother Lee. I think... Each of these countries are trying to do their thing, right? But let's remember, most of the carbon in the air. I, teaching time, story time from Lee Grant. Brother Lee Grant gives me a, 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 time, a, a reason to do some instruction here. Look, from the inception of the industrial age, we have been throwing soot, carbon, and all these things into the atmosphere. Primarily, the countries responsible for that are England, the United States, France, Germany, and all these other countries, right? What we like to call the first world countries. They create, they use raw material from around the world, some stolen, some pilfered, some purchased at reduced prices, and became manufacturing juggernauts. And in, to become manufacturing juggernauts and to build up that capitalist money that they have in these Western rich countries, they threw a lot of carbon into the air. Now, China, India, both of them who represent nearly 40 or more percent of the population on the planet, they say, you know what? We want, we want to create wealth for our people as well with manufacturing and with industry, right? We want that. We want that. So we should have the ability to put our share of carbon in the air too. You guys did it, and we're all paying the price for what you guys did in the majority. So therefore, if you don't want us to do that, if you want us to have a better environmental policy, maybe you should pay for the damage that was actually caused by who? You. And everybody go crazy, you know? A rush, I mean, China is putting more carbon into the air than we are. India is putting more carbon in the air than we are. Well, for centuries, we put orders of magnitude of carbon into the air. And it still lives there today. Who is supposed to? And that's how we got rich, by the way. So, you see, you have to look at all sides of the story. You have to look at all sides of the story. Okay, John Smith says Democrats never pay attention to other countries like China, Russia, India, and South America that pollute more than the U.S. Right, okay, we want them to pollute less than the U.S., but we got to pay them to do it. They are trying to build their wealth just like we had built ours, okay? That's all they're doing. You can't ask them to restrict their wealth building because we've done filled up all the spaces of carbon already. Can't do that. 
All right. John Smith says, no, that, that's not the one. Let's see what else we got. Democrats continue to mislead the American public. Please tell me, my dear brother John Smith, how do Democrats mislead? Give me a specific example of Democrats misleading. Actually, I could tell you a couple, but I'm going to leave it up to you. But the real misleading and the real line and the real pollution and all of that, we can attribute that to the GOP. China pollutes more than we do. We in the U.S. are number two. It's not the top spot we want. But again, I want to rec I want you to remember, I'm going to put redness thing up here uh, for informational purposes. As you know, that's what we like to cherish ourselves on. That is, that is how much crap China puts into the air right now. But China is the, the, the manufacturing juggernaut, right, of the world. So that they are, they are more than four times our population, and they're only putting in twice what we put in. I think it's good. Look at the per capita. Per capita, United States is 15.5. Per capita, China is 7.38. Canada is 18.58, and I think that has to do a lot with their shale oil. South Korea, 11.5 per capita. So per capita, China is not doing anything wrong. Right? China, oh, let, let's correct that. China does not pollute more than the United States on a per capita basis. And that is how this number should be looked at. What the, the individual carbon contribution per person? It is not. All right. Uh, let's see. Daniel Ledo says, nationalize the oil industry. I'm not a Marxist. Nationalize healthcare. I'm not a socialist. Nationalize the power grid. I'm not a communist. N Keep denying it, Egberto. Your words betray you. No. I said bifurcated economy. Remember that? Do you, do you remember? We would want the bifurcated economy. All right. Uh, add, I, I add this should be on the screen, which is that now. Rudin, you're get, I, I just put that on the screen. It's on the screen. Come on. It's on the screen, Rudin. All right. Let's see what else we got here. May Wood says, yes, historically, we are number one. And we're still... We're not number one. It, it seems like Canada, no, no, the United Arab Emirates are 20, no, not even them. Qatar, 37.9 per capita. Oh, wow. Folks, we're not near the, uh, the top, man. Anyhow, anyway, anyway, you have to look at it on a per capita basis, okay? Melanie Keelan is in the house. She says hi to everybody. Uh, what else we got? Michael Rudin says, May I, I'm not a top spot worth being proud of, I agree. Uh, Daniel Ledo says, let's call it what it is, Biden investigation, okay? Uh, EV makers pillage for lithium is destroying wildish habitat all around the world. It is terrifying that it, what is being done to get all motor vehicles to spread their waste and destruction. All right, Lee Grant says, I've heard this argument. I don't find it compelling if another form of reparations the left is constantly asking for. All right, Lee, uh, it's not good enough to say you don't find it compelling. If country number one, if, if the atmosphere has a certain quantity of carbon it can absorb before it really goes haywire with the weather and, and, and so forth, and if the United States of America and England and other places were the ones responsible for putting all that carbon into the air, and you have poor underdeveloped countries who never did that, but now in their process of developing, they're now putting their share of carbon into the air. Why is it that you don't find it compelling, fair, honest, moral, that if you built your house by filling the, uh, filling the atmosphere up with carbon, that you deny somebody else the ability to do build wealth by either they should be able to throw that amount of carbon in or giving them the resources to use some other form of energy so that they themselves can grow. Think about it. I don't see anything wrong with that. All right, I'm also interested in, Michael Rudnan, in what you'll come up with with the right-wing bubble. Just make sure to fact-check before. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Peggy Lopez says, Democrats mislead 
by marching lock and step with the GOP on the increases of the military budget. I was a girl. You just you you, you know we're we're on the same wavelength. We're in the same wavelength. That's what I was thinking. All right, what else we got here? Egberto, the one I asked you to post on the screen. I did, I did. It's already, oh, I did. I probably didn't show it. Sorry about that, brother. There you go. It's on the screen now. Is that better, AVQ? It's on the screen. My commitment to free speech extends even not to banning that. I got it there. The duck that quacks, I haven't seen you in a while. Trying to make take on winter. Uh, 50% less methane than last year. How are you doing, the duck that quacks? I haven't seen you in a while. I, w I just sold a wasted lithium battery on eBay for recycling salvage. $22. Great. Uh, Michael Rennan says the damage from coal and oil exceeds by orders of magnitude. Anything the mining industry is responsible for. One in the five debts attributed to fossil fuel burning. Great, great point. And we also have the duck that quacks says lithium batteries are nearly 100% recyclable. Michael Rennan says, pardon the double delete. Don't worry about it. Uh, lithium uh, is, okay. Lithium cobalt are returning good dollars green scraps. All right. We also have Carl Cox. He says, as always, most, not all politicians, accept bribes to do mega rich, mega corporations bidding, causing inflation that the little gal guy pays for. See Big Oil by Forma for Companies. All right. Here is our last video. Republicans are doing what? They're killing their constituents. But how are they doing that? Well, <clears throat> guess what? Report's been out for, I guess, a, a few weeks now. But it's been found that most of the debts that are occurring now, or to put it bluntly, 76% more debts are occurring in Republicans than Democrats. Because Republicans continue to buy the Kool-Aid about the vaccine from the GOP leadership, from the uh, pundits and the fall news that they listen to. And it's actually starting to cost them lives. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Hospitals were overrun and more than 300,000 people had already died from the virus. COVID cases and hospitalizations and deaths were just surging at that point. And then starting around mid-January, one month into the vaccination campaign, COVID cases and hospitalizations began to plummet. That was followed by a decline in daily deaths. You can see a steep drop off beginning at the end of January here. And you know what was increasing at the time? Daily vaccinations. Shots in arms steadily rose through the winter and the spring of 2021. And that's because the vaccines worked. And importantly, they worked as the scientists who developed them predicted and as the government doctors and the public health officials who painstakingly vetted them also predicted when they voted over and over again to approve them in the first place. Over the course of 2021 and 2022, dozens of doctors who sit on the FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee and the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization practices. They met dozens of times to analyze data from Pfizer, Moderna, and other countries using those vaccines to assess the safety and the efficacy of the mRNA shots for Americans. Every single time, both panels voted, often unanimously, to recommend the vaccines for public use. They decided the benefits outweighed the risks. It was effectively a resounding yes for their safety and efficacy. Two years later, the CDC says more than 1,080,000 people have died from the COVID virus. But today, we learned from a new study that more than 3 million deaths were avoided because of vaccines. 3 million people in the United States are alive today because of vaccines. We also now know that many more of those lives saved were likely Democrats rather than Republicans. In September, the National Bureau of Economic Research published research looking at hundreds of thousands of deaths in Ohio and Florida from 2018 to 2021. The researchers used voting records to determine their party affiliations, and they used previous death records from those states to determine the expected number of deaths in those states every month. They found that the excess death rates, those deaths above the expected rates, for Republicans in Florida and in Ohio during the pandemic, that rate was 76% higher than Democrats in the same states. 76% higher. 
And looking at their graph, you can see the gap between Republican excess deaths and Democratic excess deaths. You can see that gap widen in May of 2021, by which time vaccines were readily available. That gap has stayed present through to 2022, meaning that Republicans in those states are not vaccinating and that at least some of those Republicans are dying instead. There is a steep cost to playing politics with public health, the highest cost you can pay by most metrics, which is why it is particularly surprising that in Florida today, Governor Ron DeSantis and his Surgeon General Joseph Latipo, they held a 90 minute roundtable discussion on the alleged harms of taking the COVID-19 vaccine. And that's not all. At the end of that meeting, Governor DeSantis added this. So today uh, I'm announcing uh, a petition with the Supreme Court of Florida to impanel a statewide grand jury to investigate any and all wrongdoing in Florida with respect to COVID-19 vaccines. And that will come with legal processes that will be able uh, to get more information and to bring legal accountability for those who committed misconduct. Santos didn't stop there. He also promised to create a public health integrity committee to, quote, offer critical assessment of recommendations from the CDC and the FDA. In 2020, obviously, there was an increase in excess mortality because of, because COVID was there. Uh, then you have the mass introduction of mRNA vaccines in 2021. And you would think that there would be a reduction in excess mortality. And there just wasn't. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is correct that there are persistent excess deaths from COVID, and they tend to be among Republicans in his state and in Republican counties nationally. Despite widely available mRNA vaccines and variant specific boosters, people are still dying of COVID. People who have not gotten the vaccines because they are Republican and have ingested a steady diet of partisan propaganda alleging that vaccines are somehow bad or can kill you or track you or turn you into an alien. So yes, unnecessary COVID deaths are still happening. And it is because of partisanship, not bad science. Which is why the governor's decision today to inject more partisanship and widely debunked anti-vax theories into the public square, it's why it's all very deeply troubling. Now ask yourself your question. Uh, this is a party, the Republican party that is, that says they are the party of life. They're the party that believe in family values. They're the party that will do whatever it takes to save life. But of course, we know their stance on the death penalty. I mean, somebody does something they shouldn't be, they should be put to death. But they're pro-life. Now we have a vaccine that solves problem. And guess what? It turns out they are not worried about uh, life after all. So when, if you're a Republican right now, if you're a conservative and you're following all the conspiracy theories, etc., remember the reality that the policies that's been placed on you kills. Yes, the trying to get you not to take vaccines kills. Not giving you family leave kills. How does that kill? because it destroys the fabric of a cohesive family. And all together, we start to get things like latchkey kids, and we know what that leads to. So all these policies that progressives support, that we know saves families, Republicans are not for it. Republican politicians, that is, they're not for it. In effect, they're only for life of a fetus, but for the living, the living human beings, they really don't give a damn. We spent, no, they really don't give a damn. And that I say categorically, you can't care about people if you do it. But anyhow, let, let's continue this here. Okay. Um, where am I? Egberto vaccines. Let's, uh, it seems like I have more there. All right. Let's get busy. Uh, it's all in jeopardy. McCarthy sounds increasingly alarmed as GOP opponents refuse to budge. Well, we'll see. I'm trying to get as good dollars for my aluminum can scrap. 
yeah, I don't know how you do that, but I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I, I used to see some things like at CVS, etc. Anyhow, Carl Cox says, as always, most not all politicians accept bribes I, I, that do mega rich corporations, bidding costs and inflation that the little guy pays for. See Big Oil, Big Pharma, for example. Michael says, want to end corporate corruption over our government politicians? Vote in primaries. Aim to elect anti-corruption candidates. Justice Democrats are one such groups, and you have to keep the pressure on them. All right, we have John Smith says, Egberto, the vaccines didn't prevent spread of CV, not COVID-19. Didn't you hear this? Hmm. Uh, here's the science. Here's the science. We have all kinds of science, perfect science. We have counties that were masked counties, unmasked counties. The counties with masks, less people died than the counties without masks. Now let's go to the actual vaccine. Republicans generally, or a lot of a high percentage of Republicans don't take the vaccines. A high percentage of Democrats take the vaccine. When you look at the mortality rates and the re reason behind the mortality, you find out that it's because they didn't have the immunity and they didn't have the prep. Now, I hear you. Uh, I, I hear you that your uncle, you said, passed of COVID. I believe you. It's not a guarantee. It's a game, a chance, but you want to increase your odds. Why isn't it a guarantee? Because as you get infected with COVID, if you are the unlucky person where COVID decides to mutate in your body, then of course, the, the treatments for you could be less efficacious. Again, common sense. But in the aggregate, COVID-19 is mitigated by the, by the vaccine. You may still get COVID. You may not. If you get COVID, you live. In fact, according to Dr. Fauci, 100% of people live. Okay, that's, that's what he found out hundred in his test group. Of course, that is plus or minus 4%, and henceforth, your uncle was unlucky to be in that part of the, the, that percentage, and for that, I give you my condolences. I, you know, I'm pretty sure if he had done the right things, uh, you, well, the, I shouldn't go there at all. All right, uh, Egberto, the vaccines didn't prevent spread. Yes, it did. All right. JB, we need to overturn the disastrous Citizens United. Exactly right. That's done insurmountable damage to our democracy. Citizen, the United says, money is speech. And not only is money speech, but it also says that, wait a minute, uh, you can give unlimited. No problem. No problem. No problem. All right. Uh, Rodney says, Egberto, we currently in a COVID lull. I was expecting another wave Two weeks of Thanksgiving, but it didn't come. I'm glad to have been wrong. Uh, here we go. That is what it looks like. Uh, where is that? Is that New York or the United States? Oh, that's the United States. Wow. That looks great. Look, at it hadn't, it hadn't reached a peak again, and that's because a lot of people are vaccinated. John Smith says, no, I read that all one already. The duck that quack says... Still alive and waiting for my fourth booster, uh, uh, booster two. Not sick once, even with COVID, sick person in the home. She didn't get her booster on time. Hmm. Well, I got my, fifth, my fourth booster, which is my fifth vaccine, I believe. So, yeah, I, I did it. British MCP says, my sister, her hubby and son just got COVID. Hubby was boosted, sister was not. Hubby is the one who got it first. He's of age and helped to get the, vi the vial meds. Sis is not, and boy, is she sick. Yeah, it hurts. I did, I got it. All right. Uh, Michael Ren says, are 76% more, Republicans are 76% more likely to die from COVID than Democrats do to their anti-vax position. That is true. Uh, of course, right now, the group that, and this is from Maywood, the group right now that uh, the highest death rate is seniors who have not kept up with their boosters, and I'm afraid that my mother fits into that demographic. Maywood, help her out. Uh, Peggy Lopez says, this is DeSantis' commitment, uh, an act of attempted genocide on Florida citizens. That's what I think it should be called, attempted genocide. Yes, it is. 
Uh, if this panel succeeds, then he will commit genocide on Florida citizens, all to make himself look more Trump-like. Hmm. Trump's luster's fallen, Trump luster's fallen. All right. JV, over 13 billion vaccinations have been administered. If the run, if the numbers that regressive keep lying about are true, there should be millions of millions of people suffering from vaccine side effects. Look, these guys are happy. They don't mind as long as they stay in your bubble. Many of these people don't mind to be self-delusional. You and I can't, but some can. Egberto, you might find this interesting after the show. The rational study links you know, on VAX to car crashes. Oh, really? Didn't know that. All right, let's see. The, the Satan, I like that. The Satan in his name. Ha! Huh? That's funny. John Smith, my uncle, died from the booster shot. I heard you. Uh, Jules Rayfield, how you doing, Jules? Thank you for that call earlier today at the earlier show. Greetings, Egberto. The only thing pro-life about Republicans is them being pro-telling you how to run your life. <laughs> I actually like that one, Ray. I love it. Uh, John Smith says, so says the autopsy. Oh, uh, uh, okay. John Smith, no, let, look. Hey. Daniel Aldo says, my sister took the vaccine and turned into an alien. Notice how they mix real concerns with the absurd. Master propagandist. Who's the one who said that again? You did. You did, Redmond. You did. I mean, you did, Ledo. You did. E2247 says, thinking of your sister and her family, including you, in a good way. Thank you. That's how we do here. That's how we do here. Uh, Jules Ray Winfield says, and it's about time somebody held the corporations accountable for them and the complicity in the debts of Americans for the purpose of profiteering from the war economy. I agree. Michael Renner says, Daniel Ledo, there was a Vaxxer report that someone said, taking the vaccine, turn them into the Hulk. Oh, my God. It was a good joke. All right. Peggy Lopez says that uh, when the life of the mother carrying an uh, unviable fetus or a situation where the mother will die from the continuing carrying of the fetus, Republicans are not even pro-birth of the fetus. Both die. Yeah. Both die. Ray says, you know, it's so sad that a lot of people were willing to die for the cult that is the Republican Party just to own the libs. The thing about it is they never own the libs, you know. Daniel Ledo says, hey, Egberto, are you a Wuhan lab leaker, leak denier? No, but I can see you're a, a Wuhan lab leak believer. You know, I see that's what you are. All right, what else we got here? Oh, time is coming up fast. The Hill, Fauci says more than 99% of people who died from COVID June were not vaccinated, expected. Oregon researchers posted several cannabis, this is from the Duck That Quacks, as cannabis studies, uh, but the studies are cold cases now. Big Pharma stepped on them. For anyone interested in COVID cases from Rudnan, a graph that Egberto didn't show on the screen here is, why did you say that? Here is the graph that you want on the screen, Rudnan. Here we go. Is that, the, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. All right. All right, what else we got here? What else we got here? Michael Reddy said, Egberto, yep, anti-vaxxers are 72% more likely to get into a car crash. Uh, hope you watch it. I will. John Smith says, LOL, we obviously are in crazy town with made-up stats. Hmm. Wow. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Alistair says, I am a Wu-Tan follower. And Daniel says, whoa, Egberto plays a video of a report that the woman says in the report that some on the right believe that Vax will turn them into aliens. Does he even watch the videos he posts? I didn't post that video. I didn't post that video. Thank you. John Smith says the CDC is already admitted that the Vax of boosters don't protect them from infection or that's not what, that's not what the report said. You, I suggest you read it again. I suggest that you read it again. John Smith says the CDC has already admitted that. No, that's a repeat. Egberto, the funny thing is you still didn't put the graph on the screen. Oh, <laughs> you see, it's, it's a two-step process. There you go. There you go. Is that it? 
Did I get it right this time, Brother Redman? Is it on the screen now? Thank you, sir. I think I did it. I think I did it. Egberto, the funny thing is he didn't put a graph. And Daniel says, you just played that video not 10 minutes ago. Are you okay, Egberto? I did? What video? What video? I just played two videos today. Okay. But uh, maybe, am I, or did I play, did I play more videos? Am I going crazy? Am I nuts? I only played two videos, sir. All right, what time is it? 54, we got another three minutes to go. Brice says, Egberto Willis, you out nothing on screen that we ask. You may have thought, but it didn't work. Okay, okay. I know what happens, Brice, is when I put it on the screen, I got to then send, I got to ship it out to the next channel so that you guys see it. So forgive me for missing that, but I have it up now, right now. Jules says, Alberto, do you notice a trend in the amount of female acquaintances who opted not to get the vaccine because they felt it could be detrimental to their reproductive health? I didn't notice a lot of that, but I, know, I, I didn't notice that personally, but I know that it's out there. All right, uh, Egberto Willis, again, your hair is green. Hey, where is that green coming from? It's not even the stumps because I shaved it off this morning. No sé qué está pasando. Mira, te voy a decir algo, Bridge. No, soy, no sé lo que está pasando, pero vamos a ver qué es lo que pasa, ¿ok? Vamos a ver si puedo hacer lo que tengo que hacer. Need to do what I need to do. Daniel Ledo says, the MSNBC video about Republicans and dying Democrats, you smoking pot? I only played that once. I only played that once. The first video was the oil companies. The second video was that one, sir. I'll have the tape. All right. Drew says, all right, time. Is it hard? This is a lot from women in my circles that identify themselves as politically progressive, which I felt to be very contradicting. Lee Grant says, the one and lab leak hypothesis is still viable. We need the truth. I agree. And Jules, sorry, disregard the last text. My voice transcriber didn't pick it up correctly. Uh, where have I heard that before? Where have I heard that the voice transceiver didn't pick it up alone? Eh, my mic. The median age of Fox News and MSNBC viewers is 65. And for CNN, it is 60. Wow. Uh, the Woolman uh, lab leak hypothesis is a conspiracy theory, not science. I know. I know. I know. Anyway. We got to get out of here, but here's what I'm going to do. Like I said, I'm going to just do quick asks at the end of the program. So I ask you so kindly to support the show. How can you support the show? You can support the show in one of various ways. The best way is using our Patreon, politicsandright.com slash Patreon, politicsandright.com slash Patreon. We're trying to get more subscribers. Uh, also, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. Why don't you go to our store, pick up some of our stuff so you can turn your family on to Politics and Right. So go to politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. And of course, get the books, politicsandright.com or books. I guarantee you'll, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it, politicsandright.com slash books. Let's see if there's anything else uh, that I need to say. I support reintroducing jaguar animals into the Southwest. Uh, Ray says, I enjoyed hanging out with you. This few segments of the show, Berto, and I hope you and your family enjoy the weekend. We'll sure try, we'll try to do so. Bridge says, thanks all. Have a good weekend. Much love. Got to get Amy a hoodie. You got to get you your hoodie. And here is the Politics Done Right hoodie. You like it? And you notice the sign, I support independent media with the Politics Done Right logo. Please consider getting it. I guarantee you, you will like it. All right. My name is, is, mi nombre es, a, let's see, Daniel Ledo says, who is telling you to post this stuff? It's not your idea, obviously, you didn't even watch it. Uh, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't post in the chat except to answer questions. Anyway, my name is Egberto Willis, this is Politics and Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. 
we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.